When I was a boy at summer church camp, yes, I was raised Episcopalian, weren't you? And I was at Cass Lake Episcopal Camp in Minnesota, land of 10,000 lakes and even more mosquitoes. I was walking along a path one halcyon summer day when some girl who was a ten head, full head taller than me and wider than me grabbed me from behind and put me in an arm lock. And much to my mortification, every single boy and girl in that camp walked right past me on that trail. And one girl even said, there's an easy way to get out of that. And the girl behind me, who I never saw, I just heard her voice, she said, I know. Yes, I was getting my ass kicked by a girl and I was learning to like it. Isn't life funny that way? The oddest moments come out of nowhere and they hit you smack from behind. And you learn that you like getting your ass kicked by a girl. Huh. And that brings us to the momentous events of this week of the State of the Union, where Donald J. Trump found himself getting kicked in the nuts by a girl. And I wonder, does he like it? Yes, the State of the Union. It's a very interesting phenomenon peculiar to America. And it's, uh, it goes right back to the Constitution. You know that heady stuff. You read the Constitution each morning over your cornflakes. I do. My homemade cornflakes, you know. Pull the, pour the cornflakes in the bowl and pour milk over it all by myself. Yes, reading that salacious material of the Constitution. Almost like a gothic horror tale. Because you get to Article 1. Uh, uh, uh. Article 2 has to do with the presidency. Not Article 1, as Nancy Pelosi so fondly pointed out to Donald J. Trump the other day, Congress comes first, and the founders have spent all this time when you read the notes of their deliberations at the Constitutional Convention. They are just word sick about making, tinkering, building, designing, developing the perfect Congress. So they get to the president, and it's like, well, let's give him a couple of tasks to do. Oh, he can run the army and the navy when he really needs to, and it is a he. And, uh, oh, let's uh, give him a couple other things. Because basically that, what they came down to is they were looking at the president as some sort of city manager type, right? Really low key. They had just rebelled from one king. They were not going to set up another one. So it's interesting because one of the few items that they actually specify is that he's supposed to, from time to time, inform Congress about the State of the Union. And George Washington, that austere, forbidding gentleman, father of his country, was the first to start. He just had this quick little address and he sort of stood up, you know, there in New York, you know, before the Senate, in the Senate hall there and uh, said, well, um, basically, we need to fix the roads attend to weights and measures, and, um, because the mail's got to get through, you know. And, uh, oh yeah, well, the British haven't left, even though they promised to, so let's make sure we don't forget about the army. And that was basically the first State of the Union. Not really heavy-duty theatrical stuff. And John Adams sort of followed in that vein, and then Thomas Jefferson, who was being very spiky, almost French-like in his approach to the Republic, he was anti-king everything, anti-monarchy, anti-aristocracy. He said, I'm not going to give a speech to Congress. I look like the king in England doing the speech from the throne. So he just, you know, wrote a letter and had a bike messenger over to, uh, you know, to Congress. And they had it, they read it aloud. And that became the new standard for like the next hundred years or so until Woodrow Wilson came along. Now, Woodrow Wilson, he was very fond of himself. He was pretty certain that his dander did not fluff. And, uh... He was not one to take anybody else's example. He had to set his own. So he just pulled that old dusty rabbit out of the hat and said, I'm going to use this to advance my agenda. And that's when the State of the Union started to take on the trappings of what we see it now. The president stands up there, the whole nation watches, and he basically says, this is what we are going to do because I say so, which is not what the founders wanted. Congress is supposed to make laws, not the president telling Congress what laws they should pass. And so, just like the White House, Air Force One, the wonderful window dressing of the Secret Service, the State of the Union goes to the heart of what makes the president so powerful in this country. That is until this week. Because Donald J. Trump got into a pissing match with the Tigress and he lost. See, first off, he wanted a wall and she said no. And then he said, well, good, then you can't go, you can't take a military plane to Afghanistan. And she said, I don't care, I'll fly commercial. And he said, yeah, she'll fly commercial. Eek! 
All the terrorists in the world lifted their heads and said, Nancy Pelosi's going to be on a commercial flight. So guess what? She didn't get to go to Afghanistan, which really made her mad. So she said, well, guess what? You can't do the State of the Union while the shutdown's going on. So end the shutdown. You can do the State of the Union. And he said, oh, yeah? Well, I'll just show up and do it anyway. And she said, uh-uh. Because Donald J. Trump refuses to do his homework, right? And there's this little arcane convention that Congress, both houses, have to pass a resolution, both of them, to the president saying, oh, please come over and do the State of the Union. And she said, we're not going to do it this year. So, ha! Huh! Who would blink first? Who do you suppose did? The big guy did. The orange guy. The red guy. Yes, he blinked first. And the bully backed down. And here's what's fascinating about this. This is what I love about this, because we're going, this is like a microcosm of everything that's happening in America today, because it's been run by these old white guys. Forever, you know the avuncular ones. They're always so happy, and yeah, they're good looking and charming and everything, until you take away their microphone. Once you do that, they start to get a little bit pissy. And that happy smile drops into a mean snarl, and particularly when it's a girl that takes away their microphone. And that's what Nancy Pelosi is doing. The women are taking charge. So what do we do about all this? Well, if you're a girl, I want you to find the biggest, baddest ass patriarch you can and kick him in the nuts today. Just kidding. I want you to give him an arched eyebrow, significant smile and say, we rule. And if you're a guy who's in the unhappy position of being treated to in this disrespectful manner, I say man up and... Take it. Who knows? You might even learn to like it. <laughs>